Hello, my name's Bev, and three years ago I took up playing the recorder again after a 50 year gap. Hello again. Um, following on from my video yesterday, um, where I played where I'm at at the moment on the bark heart hitter, which is notoriously tricky to play. Um, yeah, I took it along to my recorder lesson last night and I played it through to my recorder teacher because I went into the lesson and I hadn't seen her for a couple of weeks because I've been on holiday. And she said, right, now the concert's over and well done in the concert. You were great. <laughs> really good um so what do you what are you absolutely bursting to play now and i said i've been bashing away at the bark party again because i've been bashing away at this ever since my first lesson with her um i'm not sure how much she she likes it um i'm not talking about necessarily my rendition of it though that would be justifiable it's more a case of, and she rightly said, that sometimes bark can just go on and on and on and on and on. Um, almost like a tutorial um, or an exercise rather than a tune. Um, especially the part of her, which, as you will see, is just virtually exclusive of notes that look pretty much identical um all semi quavers loads and loads and loads and loads of them so the trick is and this is um very similar to what sarah jeffrey says on her excellent video see link below um but from her team recorder videos about how to play this part of her and she says to split it up into sections um so each section is an entity within itself because that fits very nicely here um and just focus on that particular section and what you want to get out of it um as my record teacher said bark and much of the baroque music wasn't really about expression in the sense that came later with the romantic movement um so I'm thinking you've got to kind of draw a line as to how much expression you put into it, how much um, stretching of the um, individual sections, if you like, you do. Um, I know on, on Sarah Brown, Sarah Brown, I'm thinking of my vegetarian cookery book from the 80s. Sarah Jeffrey on her excellent video on how to play this part is her said that what you don't want to do is just have just make it sound like da 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 like a metronome. And I said this to the recorder teacher last night and she said yes, but before you get to the stage of being able to play every single note fluently without mistake, without mistakes you really need to get out the metronome um, and concentrate on the bit that you find the most difficult, which for me, this is part two, the, the uh, second part. It's sort of around here, gets very, very, very tricky and I stumble on that. And of course, because of that, my speed comes right down. And the advice from my recorder teacher, which is excellent, and she said this before to me, um, is to just focus on that piece with a metronome and as soon as you get that pretty much note perfect to play the whole piece to that particular metronome um, beats per minute. It may seem quite slow for the easier bits at the start but th then you can start to gradually raise the speed of the metronome maybe by one beat per minute or slightly more um, and then once you've got it all perfect that's when you can start to split it up a bit more put a bit more um, 
feeling and emotion as much as you can with Baroque music and into it to make it more interesting for the listener and also make it more likely that you actually um, get from the start to finish without making a mistake and without feeling that it's touch and go whether you're going to actually get to the end or not without making terrible mistakes. You've got, you've got three flaps to start with. You've got naturals, more flaps, the odd sharp creeping in, um, and it's going right to the top of the um, notes, notes that the recorder is capable of, and right down to the bottom, to, to the very bottom note. So you're all over the place. Um, just like my camera is at the moment, because <laughs> I seem to have touched the uh, cord, so it's wiggling. It looks like we've got an earthquake here, but we haven't. So that's where I am with the partitor. So I haven't actually played anything, have I, in this video? Um, and I don't really want to, to be honest, because it's something I will be a bit tedious for you to watch me going through the tricky bits and getting them just right. Um, so that that's really um, where we are with the bark partitor. What I have been doing is obviously, and I've been doing it for some time now, is looking at the other movements within the partitor. We've got a corrente. We've got a saraband, which is slower, which I'm not too keen on. Um, and we've got what Bach calls his beret anglaise, which is presumably supposed to sound like an English beret, an English dance. I'm not sure that it does, but hey, who am I to argue with the great master Johann Sebastian Bach? Um, I'll play you, just to put a bit of music into this video, I'll play you a little bit of the beret anglaise and a little bit of the corrente, corrente rather. Um, again, they leap, both leap all over the place um, with changing the um, key with extra flats put in and naturals and the odd sharp and you're going up and down. Um, and you've got a lot of arpeggios in the beret anglaise too. And the courant um, is similar. Um, part of the courant, part the second part of the courant echoes what's going on in the beret anglaise too, which is quite interesting. Anyway, I'll just play you a little bit, if you can bear to listen to me again. I'm still on the Mollenhauer um, Powered recorder, um, basically because I've been using it for the last couple of days and it's been fine. Um, so, this is the beret on glaze, just a bit of it. fine. Why did they get the high notes there? Sometimes, you know, when you can't get the high notes so easily with a wooden recorder, it's down to you, wait, you nail. It's so important to get the length of your nail exactly right. So if it's too short, you can't get any high notes. If it's too long, you can't get any high notes. It's 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 got to be exactly right. So you're forever filing it down um, to get the right sort of nail. And also, on the um, thumb hole, you can get nail marks. And it's in the sometimes you have to put. It's called bushing, I think. And eventually, you'll need to get um, an extra piece there to cover those nail marks on the thumb hole. Um, but anyway, I actually played you a bit of it. Okay, so that was a little bit of the beret on blades just to get a feel for it. And I'll just do a, a little bit of 
the corrente, if that's how it's pronounced. Just a little bit of it. bit of that um I don't know if this video has sort of been worth it really in a bit of a funny mood today you get days when you can just you feel like you could play anything here we go the earthquake again on the, on the selfie stick you feel like you could play anything in any key and you feel like you're just sailing away on an ocean of gorgeousness, of stunning recorder playing. And then you have days when you just, you feel that you haven't really improved since you were at primary school and it just doesn't happen. And today is one of those days, so... So I think we'll, what shall we do? Shall we say, yeah, that's enough. Um, I don't think I'll bother playing a bit of a summer band. I don't really like it. Um, so that's where we are with this. And I don't know whether I'll return to the party till next time or I might do something completely different. And especially if I'm in that, the kind of mood where I could feel that I could just play anything. Oh, stop. I keep doing that, don't I? Yeah. Right. Okay. I've been rabbiting on enough. And um, I'll see you next time if you've got this far in the video. Well done. Bye. Bye.